Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. It's been long enough. Last time I did this was four months ago, which is quite a long time ago, if you ask me. So we're back into the game, uh, Roblox Studio. We're back, and don't worry, I did not forget about Roblox. Just had a lot of things to do, but we are back, and we are back with a good topic. We are starting with a good topic today because today we're going to talk about procedurally generated terrain or you know they sometimes people call it pro, uh procedural terrain generation so basically what it does it's if you're familiar with minecraft you have infinitely generated worlds there are mountains everything looks nice yeah so we're gonna do that today in roblox so we're gonna create a script here and we are going to define some uh constants here so our base height will be the amount of height you want the mountains or you want the uh, valleys you, all of that to be and then we want our uh let's see here chunk scale to be a certain scale so chunk chunk scale we're going to set that to a relatively low value i suggest you stay below 20 and then our render distance so local render this equals I we can set that to 40 or 50 because it doesn't really matter or you can let the user set it by adding a screen GUI and uh, we can set our X scale here to 20 our Z scale Z scale whoops Z scale equal to 20 so you want nice and even terrain Finally, our seed, local seed, equals math.random. That way, you'll get a random seed each time you play. Or you can set it to like a fixed seed, like one or two. So we're going to create an empty chunk table to keep track of all the chunks, like so. Now let's make a function to uh, check if the chunk exists or not. So. going to take in parameter uh, the x and the z value so like so and then it's going to check if if not chunk chunks x then we are going to create that table if it doesn't exist we're going to create it so chunks x uh, chunk chunks at chunks x there you go equals nothing otherwise if it if that thing you know does exist we will return it so return chunk uh chunk x and chunk z like that and there we go this will check if the chunk exists in that table next we're gonna create the make chunk function so we, actually let's do let's do mount layer first because we want to generate our terrain here so local function mount layer it's going to take in a x y and z and material so this is our x y so that our coordinate and then we're taking our material like so now we are going to set the begin the begin function to our negative base height that way it will start from the bottom now of course our top end y value or the range is just going to be our y value because you know you want to generate the terrain up to that certain y value and then we're going to do a fancy math function that someone came up with definitely not me uh i will tell you that for sure and it's just a c frame so it's c frame dot new and then i'm just gonna paste this function in you can pause the video if you see but it's just basically some numbers to smoothen out the voxels of roblox all right so there is your function here so that's our little c frame our size is same thing but except for it's a vector 3 value 
Again, I'm going to paste in this math function. Uh, this will help generate your terrain. Just like that. Wait a minute. Wrong, wrong one. Uh, copy. And paste right here. So, yep, that's it. And finally, we will make our chunk. So, to do that, we're going to do workspace dot terrain. And there's a built in function called fill, fill block. And we're going to fill it with our uh, C frame size and material. And yeah, that is our mount layer function. So it will actually be in charge of rendering the material. Now we're going to create another function called make chunk function make chunk. And this make chunk function will take in a, ch a chunk position of x and a chunk position of z. So these two values are our parameters. First thing, let's see what we're going to do. We are going to set the root position to a vector 3 value, local root. I'm going to call it root pause equals vector 3 dot new. And we are going to set it to chunk x times chunk scale. Chunk x time chunk scale. And the y value will be ignored, so we're going to set that to 0. And chunk z times chunk scale. So that is our root position to where you know you want it to spawn. All right. And now we are going to remember our chunk table. We're going to load this into the chunk table. So we're going to do chunk x and then chunk uh, z. And we are going to set this value to a true value for the table. So now when we check for this function up here, it will return true. So we will know to ignore that place. Now we're going to use some for loops to create the chunks. So we can do for x equals 0 comma chunk scale minus one do and then since we also have to do one for the z value for z comma zero chunk scale minus one do all right now we're going to do set cx just a random variable name nothing special here to chunk x times chunk scale times chunk scale and then plus our iterator x local cz equals chunk chunk z times chunk scale and you guessed it plus z it is all right now we're going to define our perlin noise function uh sorry let's change that perlin noise function same thing with minecraft uh it's a algorithm for generating noise so we're going to just use roblox math that noise but in reality if you check the documentation it says it's perlin noise so same thing as Minecraft basically. So we're going to take our seed as the first parameter. So C. And then it's going to take uh, Cx divided by x scale and then Cz divided by z scale. So Cx, x scale, and then Cz divided by z scale. Just like that. Now we are going to do uh height basically our y value so let's talk let's call that cy very original i know right all right so let's do it's going to be noise times our base height or our amplitude basically up here so it's going to pass into this per noise function and that's going to multiply by 20 or 30 or 40 you you, you know so on, you get a point all right now we're going to call our mount layer function to actually render the terrain so this will be our uh, CX, CY, and CZ, and we can change it to in, uh, you know, enum material, and this can be grass. I'll just change it to grass or, or glacier, I guess, but I'll change it to grass just so that we have, you know, grassy hills. But, you, you know, you saw there, you can change it to any material you want. Check the documentation for all the enum materials and stuff. All right, now we are going to do a function called uh, check surroundings. 
So this will check the surrounding. It's going to take in a vector 3 location. So now we are going to do chunk local chunk x equals math dot floor. So we're rounding down uh, location dot x divided by 4 divided by chunk scale. So location dot x divided by 4 divided by chunk scale. And there we go, chunk chunk scale and then let's copy in this for the z same thing except for we replace this with z right here so this will be z and this will be z so now we have our two you know locations here and we can take the range of it by doing range equals math dot max and this will be our one Okay, so it'll go from 1 to our render distance divided by chunk scale. So that that's where the render distance comes in, is our range of rendering. So yeah, that makes sense. Alright, now let us do a for loop to loop through the range of the x values. So for x equals range, negative range, to range. And this will all right let's do that for the z as well so this will loop through all the range values and for each range value we are going to do a local, local variables local cx equals uh local cx chunk scale chunk x chunk x plus x yeah so chunk uh x plus x Local CZ equals chunk, you guessed it, C plus Z. Alright, and finally we are going to take a look at, so we're going to do if not chunk exists, uh, we're going to pass CX and CZ in. So if it doesn't exist, then let's make a chunk. So that way you will generate our chunk. So CX and CZ as well. So C cx and cz make a chunk like that and that is it for our check surroundings function now our main game mechanic is just a while true loop nothing too special there and then basically we do for uh for i call this garbage because it's not needed for garbage player in pairs uh game dot players dot get players or a function rather get players returns a table move through that table and then we will do if the player character exists if player dot character then we are going to set our root part to local root part equals uh, player dot character find first First child humano humanoid root part. So this will get our humanoid root part or our, or our torso. All right. So let's do if if root part exists, which it should. If it doesn't, then it's gonna check over and over again. Then we do. Uh, check surroundings root part dot position so that it will check the player's position all right let's run it so oh one more thing this little preset right here can be destroyed because we don't want this messing with our generation so go to our terrain editor click clear clear all terrain and boom it's gone so quick little thing before you want to start or else it'll clash and override with the generated terrain and it just looks messy. So delete what's ex already there uh, and just run this. And while it is running, uh, I will take this chance to say that there is a demo of this game for you to play for yourself. The link is in the description. Just press the link and click play. You will see the exact same thing on here. All right. Right here, we have a 
error because I know exactly what happened and now Roblox Studio will crash. So that is that I am I will see you once actually no it loaded. Alright, so I know what happened. A terrible mistake. You saw script timeout. The script got exhausted because in our while loop we never put the wait function, which is very, very, very idiotic. Alright, now that we push this wait function, it shouldn't time out on me. So now let's compile and run again. So while it's running, uh, leave your you know ideas in the comment section. I'm open to whatever tutorials you want me to do. And yeah, so I always appreciate your ideas. Or if you leave, like this idea, leave it a thumbs up. Alright, so we are loading the world right now and it should be loading any second there you go it's spinning it's a little slow and look at that we have some smooth purling noise so this looks like a good purling noise uh you know good purling noise mountains all right so, that, so just for demonstration, I'm gonna go back up here and change this to a hundred or ninety. Let's just do ninety. And when we play, you can see our mountains have changed drastically, and I mean drastically. So that is, you know, how you can experiment with these type of things. For example, if I change it to ninety, if it will ever load, I'll join back once it loads. There you go. Just skip the loading all right so you can see these are some pretty gosh darn steep mountains why because we did change this our base height to 90 so leave that 20 if you want rolling hills 90 if you want like mount everest type stuff so change it to 20 and don't forget our mount layer function is useful in certain cases for example we can add water you want mini lakes? No problem. CX, I'm going to set my mini lake at y value of negative 10. And then we do enum.material water. That way, you'll get uh, water at level negative 10. And since this water will just fall out of the world, let's add another bed of sand to, to catch it. This will be at negative 15, so the water is only 5 studs deep. Alright. And we can change this to enum.material.sand. Or it can, you can change it to like limestone. Actually, let's do sandstone. Sandstone looks cool. And, alright, so now let's play it. You should get a fully comprehensive uh, procedurally generated ring. So, you can see that this is only the beginning. You can mess around with the material type to create you no. Know, all different types of terrain but in less than 20 minutes or so we created you know a pretty decent looking terrain with water and sand so yeah you can, you can as you can see right here believe there will be water oh look there is giant water over here so you can see there's water right here and there is just so happens to be a giant lake right here and just to prove that our chunk system does work, if we go over this way, you can see more chunks are loaded in. Now, if we go out of distance, those chunks will disappear as to save our memory space. So you can see new chunks are getting generated as we are speaking. We are just running this way. And so, yeah, so you can see that there is a, another pool of water. Oh, if I can do free camera here. Another pool of water right here. And down below, what's happening is you have this layer of sandstone with some water, and then you have some mountains at the top. So that is pretty much it for terrain generation. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.